everybody, Javier here. Another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. So this week I'm bringing you something a little different, a little extra special. So uh, we were able to go out to the Alamo Draft House uh, last weekend and uh, we rented out a theater and a couple of us were able to get together social distance wise and um, watch a couple of movies. So Saturday I went out with uh, the crew, uh, uh, James and Zyra, as everybody here already knows them, and uh, James and Julia, which uh, people should know from the first couple episodes uh, of the baking that they did, or the cooking that they did, uh, James did for us, uh, the musubi, or musubi. Um, so, um, and then um, uh, Jennifer was with me, and I believe that was, oh, and Javier, uh, another friend of mine named Javier, uh, who hasn't been on the show. Uh, refuses to come on but that's a different story and so we were all out there on Saturday and we watched the great classic movie Clue yeah Clue with uh, Tim Burton and Martin Mull and Madeline Kahn and um, oh just a ton of other people as well uh, Colleen Camp I want to say if I'm if I'm right on her last name and uh, then Christopher Lloyd and it was just a really great movie. If you've never seen it, I highly recommend it. We saw it in, in theater, theater screen size, and it was fantastic. Uh, and we all had a great time. So I have a little clip of that and a couple of pictures, uh, which I may do a voiceover for. And then Sunday, the very next day, we did it all again. Uh, we being myself and then Rob and his family, uh, which included his son's uh girlfriend and his daughter's uh, boyfriend and then uh, Karen and Rob and myself and little Max and we were all out there and this time we watched um, Christmas Vacation that classic uh, with uh, Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo and uh, a whole slew of older uh, actors and actresses that you may recognize if you are from a certain generation on back um, so it, again, that one was really good too. Uh, it came with some extra goodies. And so I have a little video clip of that as well. So I'm going to show you the two video clips. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you the video clip and then a voiceover of some of the pictures that were from there. And then we're going to go into the um, beer. Uh, I have some uh, fantastic beers that I got from uh, Scott and Jana out at the boutique. Is like I always want to mention them. Uh, this time I bought their uh, 12 days of Christmas in a box and so I have some of the beers uh, drunk already and I have pictures of those and I'll give a little review of, of those that I uh, got done and then from there we'll go uh, and that'll be it so um, sit back relax and enjoy uh, perhaps with the beer maybe a hot toddy or some hot cocoa depending on where you are and how cold it is uh, it is a nice 67 degrees out here in uh, the Cedar Park Austin area so we're enjoying it so uh, here's a couple of uh, uh, clips uh, take a look and see what you think and we'll we'll talk more about the uh, draft house afterwards also did you read your thingy? So we're uh, we're here. Uh, we rented out the Alamo Draft House Theater uh, for a screening of the, I think it was 1988-89 movie Clue. I'll find out the year later. And so we're here, and you can see there's James and Julia over there. Hey, James and Julia. And uh, we have about four other people coming. But other than that, this is our theater for the uh, for the matinee for Clue. So uh, I'll do some uh, more movies later, but this is it for the podcast. All right, two more people showing up for the movie. Look at that. Wow. That's awesome. Find your seats, people. So here is the um, uh, fabulous uh, scene from uh, Clue where they're all sitting at the table having a little bite to eat. Um, and then the next one here is they're actually starting to try to get to know each other and try to figure out what each other has in common and why they've been summoned to the uh, mansion. And then here's the end where it's showing uh, Martin Mull there as Colonel Mustard, uh, one, of the, one of the great comedic actors, I feel. Uh, I think he's really good. And then we also have, which I almost forgot about, Leslie Ann Ward did a fantastic job. I would not have thought of her as a comedic actress in that point, but uh, she did a fantastic job, and she was hilarious. Um, and then two more, uh, Colleen Camp, I did get it right, who played Yvonne, and then uh, Lee Ving uh, playing Mr. Body. I think it was a fantastic, uh, great movie. 
Hey everyone, uh, Javier here again. Now I, this is December 13th and I am here to watch uh, Christmas Family Vacation uh, with the bro and, and the family. And so uh, we'll have another night here at the Alamo Draft House. So it should be a good one. So uh, here's uh, some of the really cool stuff the Alamo Draft House has when, when you're waiting for your movie to start. Uh, this one uh, was right before the movie actually started and it did some like very arcade looking things since we were doing um, older movies so uh, in order in uh, Christmas Vacation actually came out in 1989 so uh, this one's a little bit blurry but it was just when it was transitioning to a different scene so uh, I turned out really good it turned out to be a fantastic night and a great movie hey everyone I'm back uh, so uh, the last couple of seconds there, that last photo that didn't have any uh, voiceover was uh, a picture of uh, Rob and his family out there for the um, Christmas vacation. Uh, and uh, that was uh, Karen at the far left and then Andy next to, next to her and then Max and then Robert, of course, and then Robert's oldest son, uh, Tony. So uh, give a shout out to Karen, by the way, whose birthday just happened on Friday. I uh, hope you had a good day, Karen, and uh, if you haven't said a happy birthday to her, uh, please wish her a belated birthday. Uh, I know she had fun. She also did, I think she ran like a half marathon for herself for her birthday. What a what a trooper. Uh, so really great. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the um, mystery box that I received from uh, Scott and Jenna out at the Brutique. So what this was is uh, the Brutique was offering a, a mystery box. I'll see if I can find um, a shot of the um, of the little post that they put on there on Facebook before I show you the beers. And then I'm going to do a voiceover for the beers, and that will be our beer thing uh, for this podcast. So I know I had an extremely long podcast last last weekend, and I appreciate everyone who uh, stayed in for the long for the long haul for the long haul of doing it. Um, and uh, I appreciate you. We had a great time. I think you can tell when things started going off the rails last week a little bit. Um, when the uh, high ABV stout started to hit us, uh, we, it, was a, it was a great time. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to do uh, this mystery box. had the 12 days of, uh, of Beermus, uh, as I like to call it. So uh, I went through a couple of them, gave a couple of reviews. I haven't gotten to any more. I will get to more to the rest of them for the absolute last uh, podcast for 2020 and I'll have a little special thing going on for that one as well maybe a guest or two uh, we'll see who I can get uh, on here uh, to reflect on 2020 so let's go right into the into the beers and I'll show you what we had and once again thanks to uh, Scott and Jenna out at the Brutique for um, putting uh, all the beers together they had a lot of boxes that they sold um, and they did a fantastic job. Each one is individually wrapped and packaged. Um, if you're lucky and you manage to get one of those boxes, then uh, randomly there was some little surprises in there, and it came with a great bottle opener and some swag and all that, and I actually picked up a nice little gift card from them. So uh, without further ado, here's the um, uh, sum of the 12 days of Beermus. All right, so uh, this was the uh, box of uh, 12 uh, beers of Christmas, or beermus as I like to call it. Uh, thanks again to Scott and Jana out at the Brutique for putting this together. A lot of these were sold. Uh, I didn't put all the swag that I got in there, but I did get a good beer bottle opener, and I did win a gift card. So thanks again. So now I'm going to show you some of the beers that I have opened so far for these uh, 12 days of beermus. So this is uh, Central District, uh, which is out of Austin. Uh, this is their Cloaked in the Violet Crown, Black Currant Kettle Sour Ale. Uh, it was 5.7 ABV. It was a little bit um, on the sour end for me, more than uh, I was uh, hoping for or expected. It was also a little bit um, too sour for me, but I gave it. I still gave it like a six, uh, six thumbs up. So this was a uh, old fashioned holiday from Bell's Brewery. Uh, this was had uh, was supposed to have flavor or hints of orange and cherry in it, along with other spices. Uh, what we did find is that it was spicy, but we couldn't really taste the cherry in there. We did taste the orange though. 
Uh, it did have quite a lot of spice to it, but it was still flavorful. We gave it like a seven and eight respectively. Um, this was deep flux. This was a barley wine ale. It was uh, 14.1. It was really more of a wine than an ale in my opinion, but I loved it. Uh, it was really great and it really packed a powerful punch to the uh, to the one two to the solar plexus. Um, but I enjoyed it and I would definitely have this one again. I gave this one uh, eight and a half thumbs up out of ten. Uh, so this next one was um, Tupps Brewery. This is in a bar stool in a bear tree in a beer tree. Um, uh, looks like 5.2 ABV. Turned out to be really good, uh, really flavorful. Uh, you see the golden color there. It wasn't anything overpowering. I think it had a really good uh, taste to it. And uh, both James and I gave it. Uh, I believe we gave it a six out of ten for both. I may have given a seven. Uh, this is Hedgehog Brewery, which is right down the street from me, literally down the street from me. And uh, this is their Precarious. This is a sour ale, um, uh, a sour ale, and uh, it turned out to be pretty good. It wasn't as good as I hoped for, but um, you know, I'm not a big fan of sour ales. But uh, I mustered up the uh, the approach to it, and I did fairly well. I gave this one a six and a half. Now here is a very old favorite of mine, Old Rasputin, a Russian Russian Imperial Stout. Really good, North Coast uh, Brewing Company. Um, really fantastic taste to it. Uh, it's definitely a stout. Uh, it was enjoyed by both uh, James and myself, and we both gave it, I believe, uh, eight and a half out of ten. So that was really fantastic. And those were the beers that we got so far from Beermas. Okay, well that's it for the um, for the podcast today. Uh, I want to thank everyone who uh, participated. Uh, was in there for the both the movies and then uh, was participating in some of the drinking that I did with the voiceover. Uh, I will have the rest of the beers next week in my final podcast of 2020. Talk a little bit more about what's coming up for 2021. Uh, so if you um, liked what you saw for the uh, Draft House, you should definitely look into it. Um, not only does the Draft House do it, but Cinemark does it and uh, the Movie House and Eatery does it. Um, and definitely I would recommend looking at the uh, prices to see uh, depending on where you go some places are you rent the theater and then you have to buy the tickets other places are you just rent the theater and then you show up and only a certain amount of people can can come and you have a list um, and then uh, just I believe all of them have like buying food in advance so that you don't have to have that uh, additional interaction they just basically come and deliver the food to you you still can order more food but they really try to recommend that you get everything in there as much as possible so I highly recommend uh, doing that uh, especially right now where COVID's still all over the place even though the vaccines are beginning to get out just because people are getting vaccinated doesn't mean you can rip off your mask and just go about and be all willy-nilly you still have to be careful because there are a lot of people that aren't uh, either aren't getting the, the vaccine yet um, uh, and may not be may not be on the list and so if they're not considered um, priority they're not going to get the shot anytime soon so you have to still be careful for everyone and it's only just being respectful to wear your mask uh, even if you got the shot they haven't gotten the shot or more than likely they haven't gotten the shot and so uh, just be respectful out there and wear your mask whenever you can um, you know uh, I understand it, a lot of people it sucks sucks for me as well sometimes I will forget I do my best to always do it uh, because it's not like I said it's not just for me it's to be respectful for other people and, and I know I would feel horrible if I were to get someone sick and they got they uh, got a horrible uh, response from the virus so um, you know regardless of political or religious affiliation uh, do it because you're a decent human being don't be a prick all right, and that's all there is to it. So just do your best. Uh, make sure your children and, and friends and family are trying to do their best as well, and that's all we can do. Um, and try to do our best to minimize the amount of deaths that are out there. Uh, so not, not to bring it down. I know I brought it down right now. So anyway, go to the movies. Um, if you can, I, I, I believe they're still open and doing it. Um, you might see some favorites, some old school ones. I know I did. Uh, I, would, I think it would be great to see The Matrix again out there on the big screen. Um, I wish they were doing Planet of the Apes, the original one with Charlton Heston. Um, Rob and I, and actually his Rob's sons, Tony and Max, got to see it a couple of years ago on the big screen at that draft house that I was at. 
and it was fantastic. So um, you you may not get the first run movies, and that's okay. I think it, it was some really good nostalgia. And uh, for example, Clue, um, I don't believe anybody either remembered or seen the movie that went with me that day. So it was it was a first for them, and they all loved it. I love that movie. I can watch that movie once a month for the rest of my life and still get a kick out of it and still laugh my ass off. So um, enjoy the time that you have uh, during the holidays. Um, next month, I mean, I'm sorry, next week will be my final podcast for 2020. If you have any ideas of what you'd like me to do or like to see for my final podcast, uh, please shoot me a note. Uh, direct message me on Facebook. Uh, go to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed. It's Javier in the Air. Please subscribe and add your comments there. Um, uh, text me, um, Carrier Pigeon, uh, Smoke Signals, what, however you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me. Um, and I will start talking next week about what I'm going to be doing for 2021. I hope to continue and get this going. I hope to build a better presence online and get more people out here. So. Um, I hope you have a great week leading into uh, uh, Xmas, and I hope you have a, a happy holidays uh, for everyone who celebrates whatever they celebrate this time of year, and I will certainly uh, see you again next week. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.